Then last October, the Americans took over and decided to abandon over half of the British bases, believing they took too many men to defend. Now they've decided that was a mistake, but they're confident it can be rectified. The enemy is not our equal, not in toe-to-toe -to -toe battle, not in counterinsurgency conflict, not in IEDs. There is certainly reason to be cautious, but there is no reason to be afraid. So far on this mission, all of the Marines have survived. Captain Peterson is happy with the progress made. This is how far we made it yesterday. If we make it that far today, this is about where we'll end up, which is fine with me. It's slow and deliberate, like I said, is the way we're doing it. I'm not telling you to rush it. If you can't make it, you can't make it, but that's, that's where I like to be. Yesterday we found 12 IEDs, and you know that this whole area is ripe with them, okay? Any questions for me? Thank you, sir. All right. We'll see you guys. You ready? I am. First start. Hey, let's round it up. The Marines carry on as they started, laying down rockets to clear Pharmacy Road of IEDs. You won't see this in any Hearts and Minds manual. The Marines blast their way through buildings, even after they find out that most of them are still inhabited. All part of a wider strategy to get the job done, whatever the cost. Oh. Jesus came down and punched the earth. <laughs> this will continue all the way to their objective, the abandoned British base at the end of Pharmacy Road. We're gonna need probably one, two, three, four more wall charges. For the first time since the operation began, the Marines broadcast a message to the people of Sangin and any remaining Taliban fighters. Smoking! One thirty. The only choice the remaining residents of Pharmacy Road have is to endure the chaos and destruction around them. The Taliban are nowhere to be seen, but the search for their bombs continues. The Marines find a roof to sleep on for the night as the last explosives are fired, clearing more of Pharmacy Road. <laughs> After a freezing night sleeping outside, the Marines hope to reach the old British base by the end of the day. <laughs> Let's go destroy some more people's walls, man. That one right there? Oh, you're talking about those? Yeah. Make sure they're not laying over each other. Alright. Should I refocus the primers on the side too? Yeah, we're good. One, two, three. Ah. Come on, Wind. Now we got our way. We got a building right here. It's definitely a f***ing hole though. Nice f***ing hole. Proud of myself. It's good stuff. 
It might be a nice hole, but it shouldn't be there. The Marines hadn't realised there was a house on the other side of the wall, and it was inhabited. From this house, the Marines can see their vehicles, which have almost reached the old British base. But before the squad can get there, they have some business to sort out. I'll give you a claims card, a card, and all you got to do is go up to the main fob at Jackson on a Monday, and they'll reimburse you for it. Poor guy. Sorry. Hey, Rock. We tell him I know it's not enough to like fix his house, but just for the small inconvenience, to say we're sorry. Maybe to help with groceries. <laughs> As the sun sets, the Marines finally reach the end of Pharmacy Road and their objective, the old base, the British called Fob Wishtan. It was just 900 metres from their start point, and it's taken three days to get here. Oh yeah, this is our new place. Yeah! It's great, a lot of concrete. We like concrete. Yes. So. This is mission complete, right? Yeah, mission complete. Mission complete. For the next, uh, we got 90 days still though, or something like that. <laughs> Keep our legs. I mean, I'm not too religious. I don't pray or anything, but it's just nice knowing. Oh, there's one more day gone. That we're still here. I don't even think about weeks from now or getting home or anything. Captain Peterson arrives at the new base to serve a special New Year's Day breakfast. Scrambled eggs on cardboard. Hey. Dark Horse 2 is almost <laughs> over. Raw, one, sir. Uh, no casualties. Happy New Year, sir. Thank you. Same to you. It was obvious to me and I think everybody else that looked at it that eventually we'd have to take Wish in because we took one piece at a time from the enemy and uh, the enemy had to go somewhere. And as the noose tightened, this became kind of his last refuge. Inside the base, British graffiti still adorns the walls. The only trace that our troops were here at all. Um, there were two British patrol bases here. Mm -hmm. Do you think it was a mistake to abandon them? I, I don't know uh, what the criteria behind the thought process was that, that went into that. I'm not sure what the, what, what the reason for abandoning them was. I know it was a decision that we made not to come here as well. Um, I think a lot of people are, you can spend a lot of time talking about what could have been done better and everything's clearer in retrospect. Uh, I can tell you it's definitely the right decision to hold them now. Uh, so, um, so I'm glad that we are. But as much as the British suffered in Sangin, the Marines are having it even worse. 26 already killed, more than 140 seriously injured and they're not even halfway through their six-month tour. If casualties are the measure of effectiveness, then it has gotten worse, and it may even get worse. And I don't say that with a detached sense of evaluation. I say it you know, with a very personal um, association with those casualties. But there's work to be done. The Marines must fortify their new base. Outside, their colleagues are also working hard, bulldozing the walls and houses that surround their base. It's going to look a lot different. Do you feel bad seeing that? Uh, not really. The Marines want to deny the Taliban any cover from which to attack the base. The Marines translator struggles to explain the destruction to local people. Um, 
مشکل هم نشته ها با دکتر با ودانی و فراک نو خونه کشانی خدا به خونه را به نری چوز مشکل و مرشان پکشید مرتوق خوشی چې موږ غریب خلک یو مرتوق says you're a poor people you broke all my law مرشان ودانی پکشید یو مرتوق no we're not going to destroy his compound tell him it's just the walls it's for the the security for everybody because this whole road's been laced with uh, explosives I think people understand as, as we understand that in order to increase the security on that route in order to eventually prevent the enemy from putting any IEDs there uh, this type of drastic steps these types of drastic steps are, are necessary such drastic steps would have been unthinkable a year ago but now with new leadership and a deadline for withdrawal looming in 2014 the Marines have been given a much freer hand in how they operate. That leaves little room for the feelings of the civilians caught in the middle. Even the local mosque isn't spared. <laughs> This man just has time to retrieve his prayer mat and a gas heater from the mosque before it's raised to the ground. I know that most people in the world uh, probably wouldn't understand, wait a minute, you're trying to build a country up uh, by destroying it. And it seems like it's a paradox, but those are people who have not been to Afghanistan uh, and don't understand that the nature of conflict uh, inevitably includes destruction before you can start to build it the way it should be. Promises of rebuilding may already be too late. A local mullah has seen too much destruction and loss of life to accept more now. Four seven eight three. You're going to say a lot of bad things about Marines and ANA. They're going to say that we kill your women and your children. The Marines have an almost impossible task in turning around local opinion like this. The people of Sangin have now seen four years of increasing violence. Last year was the bloodiest so far in what is now America's longest war. We're never, never going to quit. Uh, we're never going to stop patrolling. There's not enough IEDs to, to keep us from patrolling. Uh, there's not, you don't have enough bullets to keep us from, from accomplishing our mission. Uh, this is America's longest war. So what? So it's taken us 10 years to get where we are. If it takes another five, if it takes another 10, if that's the price of success, uh, then, then who cares how long it lasts? The operation was called a success. Pharmacy Road is now clear, again. But looking at the shattered landscape left behind, victory still feels like a long way off. <laughs>